Hello, I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, Taking Care of Business today with Beatrix Abdul Aziz, who is a policy analyst with the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. Thank you, Beatrix, for uh, joining us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Uh, CFIB has released a report on on government mandated $20 an hour living wage and the consequences that would have on Canadian businesses. What would be the consequences, uh, Beatrix? Well, what we found is that if a living wage of $20 per hour was mandated, that would mean moving everyone who was earning less than $20 to $20, and it would have a great impact. 600,000 small businesses would be at the brink of closure because unfortunately they wouldn't be able to take on those extra costs. Yeah. And so we did the calculations and this amount would be $45 billion in extra wages pumped into the Canadian economy. Okay, what you know, uh, you know, why would that impact uh, 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 businesses, especially small businesses, so much? Well, it's because they're already operating on tight margins, and these kind of increases in wages without a, a corresponding increase in productivity will just make it hard for them to run their businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I know the CFIB uh, uh, a while back had done some uh, research with the members about the impact of just uh, uh, rising um, minimum wages. Can you talk yep. a little bit about what that survey found? Yes. Yeah, so we asked them what the impact of the most recent minimum wage hike was on them. And what we found was that for six out of 10, they actually had to increase wages for um, for their employees on all levels of the pay scale, because there's a cascading effect when minimum wage increases are mandated. And then six, another six out of 10 actually had to raise the prices of goods and services that they offer, because unfortunately they just couldn't take on that cost. So they had to pass it on to the consumer. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what um, uh, are you folks uh, at the CFIB recommending and asking governments uh, to do uh, regarding all this? Because again, it's, uh, uh, you know, the whole issue here becomes one of, uh, of uh, I, I guess, uh, affordability. And, and, and this is why governments are thinking about this, right? Yeah. So CFIB has lended its voice to the affordability discussion. So what we're saying is that, you know, mandatory wage hikes don't actually solve the affordability crisis. What they do is they bring on unintended consequences on small businesses. They place this burden on small businesses. There are other ways the government can actually address this crisis without placing it on small businesses. <clears throat> and we have a number of recommendations. The first one being that they can tackle the root causes of this crisis, things like housing, food and energy, which are essential essentials for people to live their life. The government has heavy influence in these three areas, and these are just a few to mention some. The government can enact policies to increase the supply and reduce the price of housing, for example, food, energy. They can also cut carbon taxes, reduce taxes that they place on people. And then we also have another recommendation, which is to allow people to keep more of their money in their pockets. If the government were to adjust the personal income the personal basic amount, people will be able to keep more money and reduce personal income taxes. People would also be able to keep more of their money in their pockets. Mm -hmm. It's ironic, isn't it, that uh, if, if uh, government's thinking of uh, increasing, you know, a, a living wage or, or, or mandating a living wage, uh, that forces a lot of businesses to probably lay off a lot of people, which... You know, there's no, <laughs> so there goes the issue of affordability. It's a moot point, so to speak, right? Yes. And we, in our survey, what we also found was that our members said that some of them would actually have to consider not hiring inexperienced workers. So, you know, it's, it's not mandatory wage increases don't actually target the people that need the most help. Mm -hmm. Who yeah. are they? So, Typically, we hear governments saying that they're trying to help single parents, but we, we got some data from Statistics Canada, and what we found was that only 1.5% of minimum wage earners in Canada are single parents with a child under the age of 18. Most minimum wage earners are young people between the ages of 15 to 24 who have a high school equivalent, high school education or less. And 
Another thing that we found is that minimum wage jobs are not a life sentence. Most minimum wage earners only stay in these roles for 12 months and within that 12 months, they're moved on to better paying roles. So like, a, again, if governments want to help the vulnerable people in the society, they should look within and see how their taxes, their policies can help these people instead of moving on the, the responsibility to small businesses. Okay. Um, what industries are typically hit uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, the, the minimum wage uh, issue and rising in minimum wages? What are the industries uh, out there that, and, and businesses that are most impacted by this? Well, I would say maybe as it could be retail. I know we looked through some of the member comments and we saw a member who was in retail who mentioned that they actually pegged their increases in wa overall wages within their their business to increases in the minimum wage. So if the minimum wage increases just by, let's say, 30 cents, they increase the wages of everyone within the organization based on that. So it's a cascading effect. And I would say retail is very well affected by these increases in minimum and, wages. And I guess also like the hospitality industry. Yes, right? hospitality. Yes. Restaurants as well. We'll see that that change affecting them significantly. And this is all you know, not to uh, to generalize on things, but, uh, you know, this has got to impact a lot of the uh, the younger people, right? Because uh, uh, those are the ones that are most likely being at that wage level. Yes, like we said, most minimum wage earners are actually young people. And the issue with raising minimum wages without an increase in productivity is that people may be less incentivized to actually hire young people who are less experienced than older people in the labor market. So governments need to find another way to address this issue without actually having unintended consequences on the people that they claim they're trying to help. Yeah, exactly. Well, super. I appreciate your time on this, uh, Beatrix. Thank you so very much. It's my pleasure. All right, wonderful. That was Beatrix Abdul Aziz, who is a policy analyst with the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. I'm Mario Tonaguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada Podcast, taking care of business today. Thanks for joining us.